In the 1920s, radio broadcast was already beginning to take hold around the world, but the next big race was on for television broadcast. At this point, there was a lot of people around the world working on it, but no one had yet demonstrated anything successfully. Today I'm in Helensburgh to find out about John Logie Baird, the inventor of television. He had an incredibly inventive mind, and even once went so far as to try and create his own diamonds by placing graphite inside concrete, then blowing the whole thing up, presumably in some attempt to recreate the geological processes by which diamonds are made. Sadly, he didn't make much money from this. I'm here today at Helensborough Library, built on the site of John Logie Beard's father's church. And I'm here to visit the Helensborough Heritage Centre, which houses a unique exhibit. And this is it. One of the original televisors from 1926, handmade by John Logie Beard and his company. So one of the biggest problems that John Logie Baird resolved was the ability to refresh the picture often enough that it looked like it was a live broadcast. People had been able to transmit pictures before, but this is really the, the innovative step to make television a reality. So in there was the screen, just inside there. The image was formed by this rotating disc on the background. The disc had 30 little holes in it that successively scanned the image so the resolution was pretty poor. The screen size itself, compared to modern TVs, is not very impressive. It's actually more about the size of a smartphone now. So at the time, this was an incredibly expensive piece of equipment, and only about a thousand were sold initially. But by the early 30s, hobbyists could buy a kit like this and construct their own television receiver. He attended what would become Strathclyde University and also a stint at Glasgow University, but he never stuck around to graduate. He wasn't part of the academic elite and he worried that scientists who thought television was a pipe dream wouldn't take him seriously. But he was a relentless innovator and he wouldn't give up. And given enough time, he cobbled together the first prototype television out of boxes and cans, spare parts, and held together with string and glue. And once he had that prototype, he invited guests from the Royal Institute, scientists, to a small flat in London to see the first televised image. Following the first demonstration in London, John Logie Beard made the first long distance television transmission from London over 400 miles of telephone line to here, Grand Central Hotel in Glasgow. After the first long-distance television transmission came the first long-distance television broadcast using Broadcasting Tower in London to here, New York, making it the first transatlantic television broadcast. The broadcast images of a moving man and woman's faces were disjointed and noisy, but recognisable nonetheless. This television broadcast ensured that John Logie Baird's name would be synonymous with the birth of modern television. He's today remembered as the inventor of television and was ranked in the top 40 of Scotland's most important scientists. So despite demonstrating the first practical television, his mechanical system eventually lost out to the electronic system. But he didn't stop there, and in fact, he demonstrated the first colour television and even demonstrated 3D TV. And it all began here, this small house in Helensborough.